Hi everybody, today I want to speak to you about something to encourage you that you have a part to play in the Church of God today. You might not be called to a pulpit ministry, and by that I mean you get up and you stand behind a pulpit with a microphone in your hand and you preach to people, but you have something to give in the body of Christ. And I want to say to you, I've given this a title and let's see how it fits in with the title, but I've called it God is Building His Church. And um, here's my first scripture. It's Proverbs 24, but uh, it's from the Passion Translation, and it's verses 3 and 4. And it says this, Wise people are builders. They build families, businesses, communities. And through intelligence and insight, you need some intelligence today, um, and insight, their enterprises are established and endure. Because of their skilled leadership, the hearts of people are filled with the treasures of wisdom and the pleasures of spiritual wealth. Um, and to me, that speaks of you and I in the body of Christ. We get wisdom from God and we realize that we're not called, uh, placed here on earth just to fill up a space, breathe air, get by, get on with our lives until one day we die and go to heaven, that we have a purpose here and that is to build. So we are part of those who build together with God. We build the kingdom. Uh, we extend the kingdom here on earth. That's our, our, what we are called to do. And it's they build families, businesses, and communities. Um, don't just think that because you're a businessman, and I'm sure most people know this by now, that you're called into something other than full-time ministry that you don't have a part to play god's church is out there in every sphere of um, the workplace the marketplace the school the university the home life whatever it may be you and i have a part to play and we've got to find that and um so it's with the wisdom of god the treasures of wisdom and the pleasures of spir spiritual wealth come because of skilled leadership so let's have a look at 1 Peter 2 verse, mm, verse 5. We'll look at this first. It says, coming to him as to a living stone. Keep that little phrase in your brain. Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, speaking of Jesus. And then in verse 1 Peter 2 verse 5, it says, you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. That, that little phrase, living stones, is very important because a lot of people feel, you know, God uses things that are alive to build up his spiritual house. To, it says, you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house. Um, that little phrase, whenever I read that scripture about living stones or I read something about building, I remember that I, I once heard a person who builds with stones is called a stone mason. And I heard this man uh, tell a little, um, give us a little uh, illustration of what it was like to build with stone. And I'm not talking about building with bricks. You are not a brick. God doesn't say you are a brick and I'm building you as a house. He calls us living stones. So this man said to us, he described it this way, that when you build with stone, you find there's a stone. If you take two stones together and you knock them together and there's no sound, it's a dull stone and it can't be worked with. They don't, they put it aside and it's not used for the building but when they take two stones and they knock them together and there's a ringing sound it means the stone can be used for building and so god when god calls us living stones i see you and i as these ringing stones that can be used for building his kingdom and the reason that we are alive is we are alive in christ we've been brought out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his marvelous light we've been called out we are the called out ones the ecclesia today, God's church on the earth, the called out ones, is not talking about a physical building, but it's talking about you and I representing the kingdom and that God is still very busy and very active in building his church. And what he's doing is he's using you and I as the living stones because 
whenever there's opposition that comes our way, our life in Christ is just comes into play. Um, the giftings we have, the anointing on our lives is powerful. The living word, the bread of life, the rivers of living water that flow from our belly, all of these things as part of our rich inheritance in the saints, um, and there it says, the hearts of the people are filled with the treasures of wisdom and the pleasures of spiritual wealth. To me, that speaks of everything that we have access to, everything that we walk in because of Jesus that enables you and I to be these living stones today. So I don't want you to look at your life and think, of, oh, I've got so many problems. Um, I'm going to do a live session on how does your ceiling become your platform. We talk about it, we throw it in there all the time, but how does this really work? How does your mountain become a place of overcoming when all you see are the obstacles? And I'm, I'm working on that and I'm going to do that in a live session. And so I want you to see yourself, God sees you as a living stone, not as a dead, useless brick put aside unable to be used i believe in these times that as god is is busy on the planet just we see the evidence of the work of the the kingdom of darkness but we need to know that god is busy with his people calling his people out um, stirring us by his spirit so let's look at psalm 127 um, it says this unless the lord builds the house they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. And now we know, we have scriptures that God, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. God watches over his word to perform it. God is watching over his people. God is a wall of fire and the glory in our midst. And we have all of these promises. So we need to see that God is building his church. And our mission is to expand the kingdom, to reconcile man to God, to bring heaven to earth. Um, and when I say that, I mean to demonstrate his promises, to, to operate in the opposite spirit by loving people instead of getting angry and hating people, to represent Jesus and walk the way Jesus would walk on the earth today. And God's government is an ever-increasing government. There's a scripture that says that. Um, it is actually Isaiah chapter 9. It says, um, the government, uh, I'll read this, for unto us a child is born, talking of Jesus again, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isn't that amazing? His name is that, all of that. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So it says of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end, which means it's always increasing. It's always growing. It's always moving. It's always active. There's nothing the enemy can do to stop the movement of the kingdom of God and the government or the rulership of God um, over his church, upon his people and on the purposes of God. And I remember last time this year, Rory and I were visiting Windsor, where Windsor Castle is in the UK. And walking around this little area, we found a church and we went and sat inside. Um, and it was amazing, the stained glass windows, the just the the tradition in in this old church and there were a few people sitting around and and i noticed it was right around the beginning of the announcement of lockdown uh, beginning of 2020 and um, there was a sense in the air in the atmosphere where we were around the uk that well around the world i'm sure nobody knew what to expect we just had this the sense of fear and the sense of uh in Un insecurity we didn't know what was going to happen and I remember sitting in this little church and looking at these people and I just knew some of these people were in a state of fear and turmoil they didn't have hope and so they'd come to a place where there was hope but we knew that this was a building um, 
whenever we go into an old building, especially a church, there is the sense of peace and there's, because it's so quiet. But we know that our hope doesn't come from going to a building and sitting in front of the pulpit and, 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 and speaking to God. We know that God is alive and real and um, that he speaks to his people and he's building his people up. And as I sat there in the church, I remembered um, all the times from the beginning of time, right back in the days of Israel, um, when the Israelites were in Egypt and um, how when God said to them, go into your dwellings, paint the doorposts with the blood of the lamb. And as the, the angel of death passes over, nothing will happen to you. Because the blood of the lamb, the sign of the blood of the lamb on your doorpost will be a protection. And I sat there and I looked at these people and I mean, maybe they were Christians. I didn't speak to them. Maybe they had the same hope that I did. But I just had the sense of hope that God and his God's government is ever increasing. It never comes to an end. So even in the midst of a pandemic, even in the midst of times of turmoil in the world, we can know that God is still building his church and that God has still called you and I to be living stones to represent him, that we have the life of Christ in us. We carry the resurrection power of Jesus in our, in our spiritual DNA. We have a word of hope in our mouths. And so see yourself as God building his church in the midst of Dark, dark times, dark days. God is still busy. He's still using you. And so um, let me just, um, I want to read you one more scripture. This is what happens when God is building his church. And especially in times where the enemy would like us to think that now we've all got, had to go underground. Um, the government is trying to stop gatherings. Whatever it is we think that we hear, all the conspiracies going around. But when God starts to do something, what he does is he lets his people know and he starts to stir us and he stir the spirit gets stirred in us so that we get into line with what God is doing. And so there's a scripture in Haggai chapter 1 verse 14 and this is when they were working on, on the temple, rebuilding the temple. And it says in Haggai 1 14, when, so the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. So when God does something, when God wants something to be done, he starts to stir his people because this word stirred up means this. Through the idea of opening the eyes. To wake, to lift up, to raise up. So I believe now in these days, God, if you will just stop and listen and take note, God has been stirring you in, in some way to get back into where you need to be if you've taken a step back because of fear and insecurity and the challenges of life, because there are challenges. And God is wanting to stir you, to wake you up to the truth that you are still part of God's ever increasing government and the gifts of the spirit are going to be more evident than before the spirit is busy alive active well just as powerful as he was from the beginning of time he is today still the same spirit of God and so we need to get in line with what God is saying and let him wake you up to the fact let this be your starting point you are a living stone in his hand and you are part of him building his church in these days so I leave you with I leave you with one last scripture. It's Isaiah 58 verse 12 and it says this, those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. This is our mandate build up the old waste places just as they rebuilt the temple in those days you and i have a commission a mission a mandate to bring um, a, a praise and worship back to god to raise up the foundations of many generations the the promises of old to rem to remind ourselves of what god has promised his church those are the foundations of many generations. You and I as the church today 
are sitting on the foundations of what the prophets in the Old Testament prophesied, the finished works of Jesus. These are the foundations of many generations that have gone before us. And we need to be part of the called out ones who raise up the, those foundations again and we rebuilding the house of God. Um, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. The repairer of the breach is those who come and reconcile man to God. Um, those who come and point people to Jesus, those who, who repair the gap or the break in the wall that, that have been caused by the enemy's lies and by the works of the enemies to, to, to bring that gap or that break in the wall. And you and I stand in our positions as the called out ones and we, we use the gifts we have. We, we, are, we allow the Spirit of God to stir us so that we are operating in the gifts and we're praying and we're interceding and we're declaring and we're just listening to the Spirit of God as He leads us. And then we become part of the restoration that God is doing today. Um, so be encouraged with that. Let, I'll give you this. You, as you think of yourself as a living stone, as part of what God is doing on the earth today with His church, remember who you are. This is what you're called to. You are called for the mountaintops. You called, to, it's, there's a scripture that says, God will make me walk on my high hills. You are called for radiance as God looks at you. Um, he look, they look to him and were radiant and their faces will never be ashamed. You called to walk and hear and think and speak higher ways. You called for tables and banquets in the valley that God prepares a table before you. You called for banners, his banner over you is love. You called for crowns. There's a crown uh, reserved for you. But mostly you called for mirrors that you can look at his image as you look, beholding as in a mirror. You look at the image of Jesus that you are being transformed every day into the image of Jesus to become more and more like him, to transmit, to carry, to reveal his glory to a dark world out there. So know who you are. Remember when you feel down what God has shown you before. And get up to the mountaintop and, and spend time in his presence. When you're weak, maybe today you feel weak. Remember how God strengthened you before. And that his government is always on the increase. His rulership, his authority is always on the increase. And it never, God never backs down. And so be encouraged with that today. Remember who you are. You're a living stone and you're part of God building his church today.